In this episode, I'm going to show you how to completely strip your hood, get it back to the bare bones, the original starting point, how to build it back up and get it ready for paint, paint it and put it back in the car and make it look amazing. Now this is a project and a lot of your projects might look the same just like this. Now this is very bad chipping and pitting and peeling. I don't think this is an OEM refinished hood. To be honest with you, if it was, that would be pretty, pretty embarrassing. This is a Lexus hood and it most likely was a new uh, replacement hood and just not prepped properly. Now, if your particular project looks like this, you don't want to sand it and do any priming. You need to completely strip it because odds are if it looks this bad, if you're trying to put any new paint over it, it's just going to delaminate and look bad in the future. So what I'm going to show you today is how to strip it and we're going to do it right now. Now, when you go to strip a hood, there's a few different options that you can take. Now, one option is completely sanding it with a DA or any type of different sander. It might be a little bit more aggressive, which will work. The only problem with that is if you're a newbie and you're going at it, you could warp the metal and we don't want that. I do find for a job like this where the paint is just tore up that this is the best option. This is the new formula. I've been using this since it came out and I gotta say, it really does work well when you do it the proper way. And that's what I'm gonna show you right now, how to properly use the product. Now, what you're gonna do first is actually you're gonna sand it with an 80 grit. Now, if you use a 36 or 40, that's even better. But what basically we wanna do is create some scratches for that um, aircraft paint remover to really penetrate into the surface to get into the paint and then start to lift it. Now I've got it all sanded. Now once you pop the top on this, you know it's like the old stuff. So make sure you're wearing a mask. So what they want you to do with this is use it very liberally. They actually tell you to use it with a spreader and like layer it on and create like a, like a surface, like an actual surface on top. But I ended up getting a, uh, a nice thick paintbrush that we're gonna use for this to really lather it on an older one, just like this. Now we're just going to lather it on. So one quart was enough to get the right thickness. What you want to do is trap it by covering it with plastic. There we go. Now you can see we just covered it and I need my space because it's, it's very strong guys. Make sure you do this in a well ventilated area. Also don't do this outside if you can um, underneath the sun, maybe something that's covered because if the sun is beating on it, it's gonna dry up that uh, aircraft remover too quick. You want this stuff to stay open so it can penetrate. So that's why again, we put the plastic on it to really help keep the fumes down into the hood and not escape up. So. We're gonna give it time. We wanna give it a good 25 minutes. Don't try to go over there in a little bit and try to get excited and poke it a little bit. Give it thorough time. I'm promising you, we'll be giving it enough time. I'm gonna go have some lunch. I'm gonna come back and I guarantee you when I come back, I'll be able to scrape off the majority of that paint right off. It's been 45 minutes. I gave a little extra time. I went and had some lunch and that's what I would advise for you guys. Take a little extra time because I guarantee you now, I haven't even checked it, but once I pull this plastic up, it's going to be really, really well. Wow. Look at that. Just pulling off the plastic and not even scraping it. We've got bare metal. Check that out. Absolutely stunning. It's going to pull off the rest now. And we're going to take a look at how well it peeled it. Look at this. This is insane. It's, it's stuck to the actual plastic. I don't even need to do the work. And that's bare metal right there. Unsanded bare metal. So at this point, we could just scrape it basically into our trash can, keeping things just super clean. We don't have any dust all around the shop. We haven't actually warped the panel because we don't have to worry about sanding. And look at this, this is just easy. This is actually cleaner. You might, it might seem messy, but if you can control it and use the uh, procedures that I'm showing you right here, it's actually cleaner because look at, there's nothing on the ground, no dust everywhere, and the metal is intact. Look at this. All right. 
Now you might have a couple areas that still you didn't get enough on, but that's not gonna be any problem. You can reapply if you want. I don't think it's totally necessary. With these, you can just sand them right off. And pretty much all we have left to do is just buzz it down with 180, the whole entire hood, create a little scratch for our epoxy and get rid of the rest of this residual um, black paint. Now, I don't really put too much of a heavy coat on the edges because I don't want that chemical to come underneath and take the paint out underneath. So I just kind of go a little bit easy on those edges and you can see the remainder here will just be sanded off. So we're just finishing up here. This has all been sanded with 180 grit and you see it's a little bit dusty still. Now Juan's gonna go ahead and finish it up so we have nice clean metal, but I'm gonna talk to you about how we're gonna protect that metal and it's so very important as soon as you've got it all sanded down to metal to get it protected immediately. We brought it into the booth. Now at this point it's best to really limit your contact so when we actually go to touch the panel and clean it, make sure you're wearing your gloves so you don't want fingerprints all over the panel. Now, in a professional body shop, there's going to be a lot easier ways to do this in the way that we're going to do it now. But since this is a pretty much a do-it-yourself channel and professional level channel, I'm going to show you something that you guys can use at home. Now, this is the same thing that the professionals would use the 2K epoxy. Now, a professional might use this as a sealer. And what that's going to allow is for me to actually seal it and then go right into my base coat after that. Now, you see Candyman, he does that process. It works fantastic. Now this process is a little bit slower, but it's a little bit more convenient for the do-it-yourselfer. And although these cans might be just a little bit pricey, they're a lot cheaper than buying a full gallon of the epoxy primer you might not need. Now why do you need epoxy primer? Well, it has the corrosion properties inside of it to protect that metal. You might think, well, I can just put primer and paint on there and nothing's actually going to get into the metal and make it rust. Well, that's actually false. Unless you have an epoxy, well, what could happen is it might start rusting from underneath the paint. Now, you might ask yourself, can I use self-etch? Eh, it's too big of an area, I believe, to use self-etch. Self-etch might be for those little small burn-through areas. A little spray here, it's a 1K product that will do the job. They also have wipes that you can use. You can wipe it on and that will protect the actual um, metal itself and then you can jump right into your sealer. The wipes are a great option, but again, not really do-it-yourself friendly. This is something you guys can get in the can and it works just like the real stuff. How? Well, basically like any of these 2K cans, two part 2K, it's got a stem on the bottom. And what that's gonna do is when I use this red cap that's included, it's gonna puncture the actual catalyst inside like a bag of hardener. And so if we just put it right here and we push really hard, we'll hear a pop. Okay, now we've just punctured the catalyst inside about three to five minutes of on and off shaking want these two to really mix together is going to really give us a 2k epoxy primer all right so this has got the gray finish now we're going to put on one coat and see how well it covers the main thing is we need the coverage we don't need the build once this is all down we'll show you the process of how to move from this to our sealer and then eventually paint So these cans really don't work good flat when the panel's flat. So uh, let's do something real quick. And this is just primer, so it doesn't really matter. The, the ground might get a little epoxy on it, but it's just primer. These just really work way better when they're vertical. So that's a little quick tip. All right, so we just finished with this. Now we have a little bit left, but unfortunately, once you've used the can, it's a ticking time bomb, you gotta throw it away. You can see here, we got a one nice coat on here. Now, some might say, what well, came out of a spray can, it's not the same stuff. Guys, it's epoxy. Most guys are doing this with just a wipe. They're not even using epoxy. So from here, I'm gonna allow it to dry for 24 hours. 
24 hours, I come back the next day, I'll give it a light scuff because epoxy is not really meant to be sanded, all right, it gets a little gummy. We'll give it a light scuff, it will scuff nice, and then from there I can go into a sealer, base clear, and be done with this. Now, if this had actual body work that needed to be done, well, there's that great debate. You could do the body work on the metal, or you could put epoxy down and then do the body work on top of the epoxy. That's up to you guys. For now, we'll let it sit, we'll come back once it's dry, and we'll get a little scuff. So we're here the next day. Now, I'll tell you, 24 hours later for a production painter is not a good idea. For a do-it-yourselfer, this is the best way to do it. It's the most simplest way to understand. Now, what I already did outside of the booth is I took my 400 grit and I used my interface pad and I didn't even use a DA and I just went over the whole surface. I don't want to break through to the metal because that would defeat the purpose of the epoxy primer. But by just using this 400 grit, number one, I mean the criteria of my TDS, my technical data sheet of the sealer application. And if I wanted to prime, I could do that as well. So if you don't want to seal, you could prime and then you can go ahead and sand that down and put your base coat right over that. A little bit longer process. I'm gonna speed things just up here a little bit using the sealer. But again, you can do that, let's say if you have dents or whatnot. Now in every video, I'm always gonna give you extra necessary information you might need for your paint job. Now we're using these microfiber tear off cloths. These are the best things ever and some of you guys have been using them. You don't even need to get them on Amazon. You can pick them up at Walmart for about 15 bucks but I'll leave the link in the description if you wanna get them on Amazon. Something else if you wanna support the channel is the Paint Society Colad Pump Sprayer. Now this is not a cheap pump sprayer for a reason because this is not a garden pump sprayer. Some of you might think you could go to Home Depot or Lowe's or Walmart to get this and you can and it will work for a couple days but then the seals will just get eaten alive by the various solvents that are put through it. Now this is manufactured to be able to handle those solvents so if you wanna support Paint Society while you're doing that, go ahead and check out the link in the description. Here, I'm using my water base first, and then my solvent. Now, one thing you might have noticed while I'm doing this is that I did not put any tape back on this hood to paint it. The reason why is because there is base and clear overspray on the underside of this actual hood. And that's just what we're gonna do. We're gonna keep it just like factory and allow the overspray to just collect on the bottom side just like they did when they painted this originally. Now, I will say this, you might have noticed that I used my tape when I did the chemical strip. Can anyone guess the reason why I used the tape when I did my chemical strip? I'll give you a moment while I wipe this down to think about what is the reason to use the tape when you're doing a chemical strip. And it's very simple actually. We don't want that chemical to leak on the underside of the hood and strip the paint underneath the hood since it's still good. So make sure that you're using the tape only really when you need it. Well, it looks like this is ready for its sealer coat. We'll apply the sealer and then we'll see if it's ready for base, move on to base and then clear coat and get this back onto the vehicle. All right, we're gonna be using the Segola Extreme 4600. I got the Aqua Cap on there. This was meant for uh, water base, but you can use it for solvent. I'm gonna use it for sealer. You wanna get a nice coat of sealer down because if you do, you're gonna get a nice finish. So around 75% overlap, We'll watch the edge, keep it moving. Gonna put it on wet. I wanna put it on wet because I want it to really build up. If I have any piece of lint or dirt that lands here, even in a spray booth, guys, it happens. This sealer will build up over it and it will smooth out actually. And if you need to do a little sanding, you can, but I don't want you to sand it yet. I want you to sand your base coat. All right, let me show you what 25 minutes looks like. See that? This kind of resembles like when a part comes in brand new and you just scuff it and paint it. This is what sealer can do for you guys. Sealer is a product that is non-sanding. You put it down and you can base it within your uh, recoat window. So make sure you check it out. Usually it's within maybe 12 hours, but it's all gonna be different. Some might be even less or more, but in this case, we're getting on it right away. I'm going to put down one coat of base and then I'm going to do a little trick that might help you guys out if you don't have a spray booth and it even helps us guys in the spray booth with dark colors, especially black. So we're back and we can see it's dry, right? It's ready for a light sanding. 
You don't need to do this step if it doesn't need it, but it's not gonna hurt you if the panel is dry. Don't get into this if you feel like it's not dry, give it a little bit more time. This is great for if you don't have a spray booth or even if you do have a spray booth, it helps to eliminate any dirt in the future. So this is a K600 piece on a hand pad and I'll leave this link in the description. And all we really wanna do is go over the surface. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna remove any sort of dust nib that's on the top. So if you're like me and you absolutely hate buffing, especially black, this is essentially your buffing step made easier. All right, so all you've gotta do is go over the surface. And as I go over the surface, believe it or not guys, I do feel a little bit of bumpiness. Imagine with all that sealer and that paint, it's not going to be 100% perfectly smooth, but this is going to make it like that. So don't get too carried away. Just go over it and you're done and you can wipe it clean using a tack rag. At this point, it's basically ready for its final coat. I'm going to put one coat down and then I'm going to wait a few moments and I'm going to go right into the second coat from a little bit more of a distance. I'm gonna double the distance, not changing any of the pressure and give it an orientation coat. This is actually a black metallic, so that's a good practice to use when spraying metallic. All right, now I just finished, it's already drying. I'm gonna about double my distance, keep everything the same and just give it one more coat. And she's all done. Now, why did I put it on immediately, the drop coat? Because remember, I just wanted to put it into something that's already wet. If I do my drop coat when it's dry, chances are it's gonna land dry onto a dry surface and it's gonna land like dirt or like sand, very gritty. That can cause sand piling, we don't want that. So allowing yourself to put that drop coat, if necessary, right into the second coat or whatever the last coat is while it's still wet is gonna benefit you and your paint job. Another 15 minutes, it's ready for its clear coat. We're using the Segola, the 4600 with the DVR air cap. That's gonna give us that OEM uh, texture, that nice flat texture. You won't notice it too much on the top of a hood. It's gonna be more flat than anything, guys, to be honest. But on the side of a panel, you will. Now, Segola came out with this uh, PPS, I guess, or disposable cup type. Now, it's pretty much the uh, 3M version since 3M version uh, 1.0 is completely uh, obsolete, you'll see a lot of the manufacturers now coming out with their own similar 1.0 uh, replica. Uh, it works, so uh, no complaints, been using it for a while and uh, we're ready to lay down two coats. I'm gonna put the first coat down just medium wet and then the second coat, I'm gonna knock it down wet, wet. All right, so fresh after that first coat, this is what she looks like. And not to deceive you guys, see a little bit of texture. Um, there is some scattered little dirt nibs here and there. So you can see them in here maybe just a little bit. But here's the trick, guys. Here's, here's what I do that works for me. I let this sit like 15 minutes and I kind of barely let it skin over, barely. What does that do? That creates a new surface. So when a new cutter goes on it, it will level off and build up over those tiny little dust nibs or maybe that little bit of orange peel. So this method works for me because if you don't, let's say you jump into this in five minutes while it's still wet, whatever you put on there is just gonna soak down to the bottom basically, all right? So if you create that barrier by allowing it to flash depending on your actual paint or clear coat that you're using depending on the hardener or whatnot, then what you can do is lay on that second coat a little bit wetter, it's gonna build up and I'm gonna show you that all of these little guys that are just little tiny guys that are just sticking up in the base coat because nothing's ever perfectly flat. All these little guys are just gonna disappear. All right, there's a little one right there. There's a couple through here. Don't expect ever your first coat to look beautiful, but I know that this looks beautiful because I know what's gonna happen in the second. 
Back again, 15 minutes, I'm gonna put it on wet and I'm gonna show you, we're gonna move a little slower, a little bit closer, and you're gonna notice that this is gonna look really good when it's done. And hopefully, we can get out of this without buffing too much. I'm not going to tell you it's perfect because nothing's perfect. There's a piece of dirt in there. There's another one somewhere over there. But what I'm trying to show you is it levels out. It, it levels it out. So see, we still have a couple pieces of dirt here, here, and here. So a little buffing, but very minimal, 15, 20 minutes of buffing, and she's done. Well, here she is. It's all back on the vehicle and it's looking good. Now, this is a quick little tip for you. We did do a little buffing here and there and we want to get this edge. I got this bumper bag. You can use it for a million different things. They put it right where the mount is for the hood. Now, as I had the hood open, I actually realized something. This is an OEM hood and I'm very, very surprised at the peelage, the chippage and the delamination of the actual paint on this OEM Lexus hood. I would figure it had been repainted, replacement part, wasn't prepped properly, but nope. This was an OEM part. Went ahead and finished up and cleaned up the rest of the car so everything matches nicely. This is actually not a, a true black. It's a little flake in here. It's a beautiful flake. I believe the color is Starlight Pearl or something like that. But uh, you can see it just came out really nice. Uh, it's got a beautiful finish on it. And uh, it's ready for the customer. Just a quick little uh, wipe. And a couple things I want to mention to you guys. And that is when you're doing a black car, you really just want to take your time, especially with, with the buffing. I like to never touch a black car with a, or any car with a hand block because that just creates unnecessary scratching. I always like to use a DA with a soft pad and that just really helps create a soft scratch that you can buff up really quick. This thing came out good. It's a great way to get the panel down the metal and build it back up quickly. Hope you guys learned something from this video. If you did, let me know. And also let me know if your process is different down in the comments. Guys, this is Brian from Paint Side reminding you, don't overthink it. It's just paint. See you guys on the next episode.